want to talk about this gadget right here, the Sage by Heston Kitchen Whiz Pro Food Processor, industry of a in other parts of the world. Um, I've had this gadget for seven years now, and it's still on the market uh, with very minimal changes, so I think I'm in a good place to say, is it any good? What do I like about it? What do I not like about it? And more importantly, would I recommend it for you? First, I want to talk about the visuals, the appearance. So it's got a classic sage look, and you already know if you're familiar with their range whether you like that or not. It's the brushed chrome, it's the large chunky buttons, everything's very business. It's very, it's not feminine, shall we say. It's got a real chunkiness to it as well. That does lead me to one of the negatives. It's heavy, real heavy. Um, and if you can see the effort there, I tried it on my scales and it aired it out, so it's far too heavy uh, for me to check. But if it's gonna be something you're moving around your kitchen a lot, you might wanna think about a lighter model. Try and find a home for it that's permanent. Mine's not usually here, I keep it somewhere else and it stays there and it doesn't move. So first of all, the Big Daddy chopper itself, which comes with a very safe plastic guard in there. Twice the blades, so you can see in there, you're gonna get lots of chopping action. It's because the bowl on the machine is so huge. You need that. Next is this variable slicing blade, which has a very, very sharp blade here, which you can adjust by rotating underneath. And that's how many millimeters deep you're cutting it. Very, very precise and extremely, extremely sharp. You also get a dough blade, a plastic version of the metal ones. And I'll be honest, not one of my favorites. It kind of pushes things around, but doesn't get the job done the way a proper stand mixer with a dough hook does. So that one goes to my nice idea. And this one, while we're on the subject of disappointing blades, the whisk blade. This has ridges and indentations on it and is designed for whipping cream and whisking egg white. Uh, I've kind of found it just kind of pushes it around and not a lot happens. Um, I find that a little bit annoying. I'll be honest, I've probably used it four times and I've never been impressed, so it stays in the box. You get a double-sided grating blade, a coarse side and a fine side. Again, another blade that I use very often, comes out to do any grating job. If you're gonna do a coleslaw or get rid of a, uh, or grate a whole bunch of cheese, this is the one. And a couple of novelty blades that I'll do together, essentially doing slicing of chip style, um, which uh, again, I've used a handful of times. Um, it's fine, chops the gets the job done. Just for completeness, you do also get this spindle that goes in the middle for the higher discs, such as the grater that go on top. And a little brush for cleaning. Not sure I've ever used it. Nope, don't think I have. And a spatula, ditto, don't think I've ever used it. But nice to have all the same. Let's watch it do a couple of jobs. So here, fill it with a grater. I'm going to grate up some cabbage for a coleslaw. Spindle just goes in into the machine in place. We are completely locked. Large hopper can come out. I've got a quarter of a cabbage here which has seen better days so it's perfect for coleslaw. Chuck them in there. A bit of horse. Quarter of a cabbage, just like that. I'm just decided to swap in a different blade. I'm going to use the uh, slicer and I'm just going to adjust it to, oh, let's treat myself, four millimeters. My locks in, potatoes in. Start. We get sliced potatoes, perfect for dauphin ones. So you have your power on off, you have your power on off, your start, pause button, so you can start it and stop it, and a pulse button just to go. Whilst researching this video, I spotted these triangles that I've never seen before. They are count up and down timers. 
which allow you to have, I can say, okay, only chop for 10 seconds. I think you get the idea. I've never used it, and I just found it after seven years of owning it. So there's something. So what are the pros and cons of the device? Well, I guess the negatives are the lack of variable speed, on or off, cyclone fast or dead stop. It'd be nice to grade up through the speeds like you would um, a stand mixer, perhaps. The size of it means it eats cupboard space like mad. It is a big thing, and you've got the box of gadgets as well you also need to find a home for. And as I went through them, not all the blades work that well. It's heavy, real heavy. And the price, I can't ignore the price. The RRP is 399, shop around, you'll get it for 349. Maybe you can find a used model as well. I can't ignore that, it's not cheap. And there are other cheaper models out there, but nothing in their range is cheap. Nothing about it is budget. So it sits at that end of the market. So what's good about the KitchenWiz Pro? Well, because of its weight, which is a negative, it does mean it's really stable. It's not gonna go wobbling all over the place as you try and cut things up and dance off the counter. Um, it's really gonna stay put. It's got rubberized feet and the weight of it is just gonna lock it in place. It's tremendously powerful. Uh, when people ask me about buying food processors and hand blenders, I always say buy the highest wattage you can because the more powerful motor is gonna get more chopping done. I've seen things um, get chewed up like Swede is a terrible one, always gets gummed up in blades uh, and you end up having to do things again or cut it apart and do it again. Kitchen is Pro, boom, straight through everything without even thinking about it. It's extremely fast. That power means it's very, very fast at what it does as well. The large hopper, it doesn't seem like a big deal, but the size of the hopper in there means you can fit four or five carrots, two potatoes down the chute at the same time. It means it saves you time. It does also have a smaller mixing bowl accessory which fits inside so you can chop smaller items, maybe a handful of nuts or dry or herbs perhaps. Um, and they chop up in there much nicer rather than in the large bowl, just get thrown around. I think the appearance is smart and clean and can therefore go with any kitchen, but you know your mileage may vary, that's up to you. It cleans up really nice. I put the majority of it in the dishwasher. A couple of blades say on it they don't go in the dishwasher. Um, but they're not the ones I use. The only thing I would say is not to put this piece in the dishwasher. I did have one that I originally did and water crept inside it and I couldn't open it. Um, I was lucky enough to get another replacement part. So would I recommend it? I have to say wholeheartedly yes. I use this gadget all the time, whether I'm putting dough together, sort of short crust pastry, um, or maybe I'm uh, chopping potatoes, as I said here, chopping cabbage, carrot, onion, anything that I'm chopping, and particularly it's gonna be a big job, not just like one carrot, but if I'm gonna do a bunch of carrots because a load of people coming over, or I'm gonna bake something really large, then I'll definitely bust this machine out and get the job done in seconds. Chuck it all in the dishwasher and forget about it. The price is the price, so, Ask for vouchers, ask friends to chip in every time it's your birthday or Christmas. Try and get some money towards it because I think it's absolutely worth it. It's a fantastic gadget. I'm a big fan of most of the Sage range, but this is the daddy. Um, it absolutely does what it needs to and is a big help in my kitchen. So that's it. That's my verdict on the KitchenWiz Pro Food Processor. If you like that, please hit the like button. Do you own this device? If you do, pop a comment down below let me know how you get on with it. Maybe you like it, maybe you don't. I'll be really fascinated to find out. Bye for now.